Hey everyone, suppose we have a conically shaped tank filled with water initially, but we make a small cut at the vertex of cross-sectional area A and our water starts draining. Assuming Tortelli's law that the velocity of water exit is k times the square root of 2gh, where h is the instantaneous height of the water at any point in time, how long will it take for our tank to empty? Now, I'm writing something that looks rather odd. The rate of change of the volume of that blue water cone is negative av. Why in the world should we believe something like that? Well, to see why, let's mentally saunter over for a second to a very different physical scenario. Suppose we have water moving with a constant velocity v from left to right, and into the flow we stick a surface s, two-dimensional surface s of area a, and let it have the property that water can completely flow through it. Let's make a copy of s, move it some arbitrary distance l to the left, connect the dots to create a three-dimensional solid, which again, water can totally flow through. And now suppose we only look at that solid. Look only at the volume of water contained in that solid at a given instant and ask yourself, how long will it take for that solid to be completely evacuated of its water content, of its volume? Well, if we define capital T to be the time it takes for the solid to empty, then our answer is simply capital V over capital T. But logically, this is the same thing as the rate at which the volume of water is leaving because lowercase v is constant. Conceptually, this is also the same thing as saying the rate at which water volume is leaving through S, because the only way to leave the solid is to leave through S. And finally, this is the same thing as saying the rate at which the blue cloudy cylinder is shrinking. And we can get a further expression for capital V over T by noting that capital V is area of base times height, A times L. Furthermore, capital T is logically the same thing as the time it takes for a piece of water at a dotted circle to travel to solid circle, but that's simply distance divided by speed, L over V. Make those substitutions cancel, cancel, and we are left with the rate at which the blue cylinder's volume is shrinking is a v. Notice, because v is intrinsically instantaneous, even if v was not constant through time, the formula would still hold, provided, of course, that at any given moment, the velocity of every piece of water flowing through s is the same. In other words, left to right, lowercase v can change, but lowercase v velocity can't change vertically in that picture on the top left. So, the rate at which the blue cylinder's volume is shrinking is AV. Therefore, the rate at which the blue cone's volume is shrinking is AV. Now you may wonder, where in the world that negative sign come from? Well, dV over dt is defined as the volume's rate of change, not its rate of shrink. So to indicate that the change is a shrink, you need that negative sign. Now let's model this water cone more mathematically. If lowercase r and lowercase h are the radius and the height of the water cone at any point in time, then its volume is given at the top left. And moreover, this is a little technique you may have picked up from Cal 1, we will always have similar triangles between the capital RH triangle and the lowercase rh triangle. So using similarity, we get lowercase r always being capital RH times lowercase h. Throw that into V, common Cal 1 little move there, gives v as a function of h, which enables to take dv over dh, that derivative with respect to h. And here's the key insight. Fall into a chain rule expression just like you did in Cal 1 related rates. We've solved for those two green terms, plug in for them, and solve for dh over dt. And simplify a little bit, noting that square root of h over h squared is the same thing as h to the negative 3 halves. And now note that the way that the differentials dh and dt relate to each other are precisely through that dh over dt term that we saw for. We saw for it, so make the appropriate substitution, leave that dt term over yonder on the right side, bring everything else to the left side, do a little algebraic rearrangement of the left side, and we are left with something like so. That guy should have had a dh on the left, that's fine, but with a dh on the left and a dt on the right, we are mathematically allowed to slap integration symbols on both sides. I'm gonna yank that constant out as well. Now crucially, let's look at some time values and the height values of the water that directly correspond to them. Let's say TF, let's define that to be the time it takes to empty. Well, when the tank is empty, there's no water, so there's no height to be had. But when T is zero, well, no water is emptied at all, so lowercase h just is capital H. These carefully constructed values tell us precisely how to carefully construct a definite integration equation using that general integration equation at the bottom left. Integral from zero to tf of dt, of course, is tf. And we are simply left with evaluating 
that right side. It's two fifths, h to the five halves evaluated from h to zero. We get this. Notice the negatives kill each other off. h squared under h to the five halves is h to the one half. And two over root two is simply root two. So final little stretch here, pi r squared root two root h over five a k root g. You can house those square roots under one square root and that, ladies and gents, is the time it takes for the water to completely leave this tank. We only need to know the r, h, a, and k values of our particular situation, and we'll know how long it takes for the water to empty. Most of the time lowercase k is one. But regardless, what made this problem so nice is that it incorporated core ideas from Cal 1 and Cal 2. That's what made it really nice.